Hey, what's up, my fellow foam flingers? Okay, so today I've finally put together the Pigeon Mark 8, and this video is really just is going to be about three different things I can talk about. Um, the experience as uh, someone who ordering this as someone as normal consumer, not a famous YouTuber. Two, uh, the reviews of this blaster and the overall experience of putting this thing together, and three. The assembly guide uh, because I really find that the assembly instructions are all over the place and there is not one version that really tells you how to assemble this thing together and it was quite difficult for me to put it together it took me quite a while to understand the schematics as someone who is not technical and all this stuff so I hope this video is going to help you guys who ordered this the who is like me who ordered the full DIY assembly kit uh, if you can afford the extra few extra bucks I mean you could go ahead and order the fully assembled kit from them uh, and, but then again I'm not sure what the quality is like uh, so um, well buy the fully assembled kit at your own risk so this uh, review or this video is really just going to be purely about this Okay, this blaster that I received because I have no idea what uh, condition the other guys received it in and um, it, it's not going to be a nice video <laughs> I'm just going to state uh, my very honest opinions on this so check the description below uh, for the timings for the different parts of the video so firstly uh, assembly or assembly instructions of this blaster will be the last part of this video so uh, skip to that if you don't want to hear me rant about the different aspects of getting this blaster okay so you are staying here I assume that you are going to listen to me complain and do some ranting about this okay not really complaints but uh, okay my experiences ordering this the full uh, the full DIY assembly kit meaning you get the parts 3d printed by them they send you the hardware and you can fix them up together uh, during ordering uh, the FAQ on the website stated that it was six to seven days for blasters okay uh, unless it's a heavily CNC machine parts that require heavy customization it's gonna take two to three weeks so I, I ordered and then after six days pass, uh, they say that they will inform me of the shipping, the ship, the tracking number, to, uh, if, if they ship the product. But I have not received it, so I was a bit concerned. Um, well, but I just really wanted an update, so I wasn't really rushing them on this. And so they told me, oh no, the lead time was two to three weeks and i'm like okay that's not what you stated on your faq but fine i'm just looking for an update so sure no it's not of no concern so um nearing the end of the third week i checked with them have they uh, shipped the item and they told me oh we did it a few days ago and i did not receive the shipping uh the tracking number so uh yeah sometimes you might have to remind remind them to <laughs> send you the tracking number so i'm thinking okay two to three weeks um that's fine if it's a you know a quality product but um it was not what i expected and honestly uh as someone who also does 3d printing i am a little bit sketch and quite upset at the quality that i received and in fact that i didn't i did not even rush them to print this up for me um, the feeling when I first received it, it felt like they printed at the lowest possible resolution just so that they can uh, rush it out as fast as possible to send as many as possible. So the first thing that, that I noticed on the outer shell is that um, I'm not sure if you can see it, like there was a missing, like they managed to catch the, the filament jam, unclocked it and then uh, it started printing again so there's like some missing parts this uh, i've seen some people receiving the blasters with this i mean this is normal if you are not building your support so this is i can leave it that but along the way there's like some really strange blobs uh, missing part uh, missing textures and really just overall very strange 
uh, razors and bulge. So, and it got me kind of worried. So if this is the shell, how are the internals going to be like? Will they fit? Uh, and uh, to my disappointment, uh, they barely fit together. Um, okay, so I'm going to disassemble the blaster and just to show you. Alright, so this is the part of the internals. I had to do some quite a bit of modification actually to really just to get this whole thing to fit together. Some parts, some of you might notice that you may not even receive them in the first place. Okay, so first thing first, okay, when I check for the parts to make sure that I receive everything. Uh, okay, the most important part in the blaster, I would assume that is to be, would be the pusher pin, you know, you got to fit the magazine. Uh, gotta fit the, the rounds into the, the flywheel so that it shoots out so when I check the part the I'm not sure if you can see it yeah. the pusher pin this part this is not as uh, well printed as I hoped it would be because uh, it looks very weak you see because it was like there's some strange uh, strange bulbs and like you know it wasn't printed properly and this pusher pin uh, uh, where you're supposed to push the darts into the flywheel yeah it did the parts in here was very rough so it n did not move at all i had to spend a lot of time fouling this down i mean okay Maybe this is uh, I'm inexperienced, but ordering 3D printed parts probably you will have to do some sending. But I did not expect uh, I have to do so much of it. Like there was absolutely zero post process uh, post processing. They probably just helped you remove the supports when printing this, and then there as you can I'm not sure if you can see this, but this Magwell, uh, Magwell I think you call this the Magwell. There is a uh, missing structural pieces that was not printed so i am not sure how this is going to affect uh, if this is going to affect the structural integrity but uh, yeah this part is missing from the print and yeah and i had to add this thing in because the gears some of the teeth of the gears had, is strangely tapered so when i was pulling the trigger it pushed out this this part of the uh, the blowback blowback gear it, where it pushes back the shell this tends to just drop out you know it just flips itself off the gear and you know i had to just make do think of a way to just fit this to make it stop popping out so my idea i came up with the modification idea was to just you know find some scrap 3d printed part which I managed to find just one strand and I just screw it in and so far it worked well and stopped giving me problem and the next strange thing that I noticed with the uh, this pusher mount thing okay is that if you notice that there is this missing chunk here this missing block uh, at this part I had to cut away this block here main reason because this slide the pistol slide for the blowback action it was it does not fit this part would at first i thought that it was a trigger being too rough or some parts not moving but the first thing first was that this this part of the slide was knocking into this part there's this strange block here so uh, in order to get it to finally slide over this thing I had to really just uh, deface the crap out of <laughs> the back of this thing you know just so that it slides okay so I had to cut away this and then um, yeah basically just sand down the crap out of this and I mean elephant foot is normal so that you'll find there's some raised edges but probably I believe that this was printed on the base so that's why this part was very flat so you might have to trim away the edges a little bit if you got this type of quality so uh, yeah even the pins I'm not sure if you can see the pins it was very rough 
this part you could see that there was like some strange filaments going on and if you notice this trigger is black they gave me an orange trigger uh, I have nothing with the color uh, because I only have black filament I had to reprint the trigger uh, first reason is that it was very rough you can see that the teeth the teeth has this strange wave uh, wavy look to it and it caused a lot of problem with the gears with the pushback gear uh, and also that the, this trigger I had to sand it down a lot just to make this part work so that it will you know, uh, fit into this the pusher the pusher pin part area all right so I had to sand it down a lot just to fit it in and just to make sure that it moves but uh, sadly, uh, I think I sent down too much of it. It cracked. It cracked on me. I'm not sure you can see it. Uh, there it is. It cracked. Uh, and it caused even more friction with the, the flywheel part. So it could not slide properly when the thing was resting on the trigger. Yeah, and it was so rough that I couldn't... This, you will not be able to do this when I when I first receive this or when you first receive the blaster it's so damn rough okay and the next part that I want to talk about is that the, um, there was like some stray filaments from the barrel so when going in I mean it will probably affect the darts most likely it will affect the dart because it will hit the strange filaments and then there will be trouble flying out so yeah later I still need to file it down a bit more and yeah oh and this does not come with the blaster I had to find this spring somewhere just to make the blaster work because the blowback action can, does work with rubber band but uh, as you know rubber bands tends to wear out and it will break and you will lose your blowback action and that's the whole point of this blaster is ha having that cool blowback feature okay and also another complaint that I have is that because the instruction as uh, the assembly instruction is so ambiguous I made a mistake of uh, not of soldering it a bit too high so this this area the, the wires and if you can see that this part is where it connects in so it will be pre it will cut into the wire so i had to bend the micro switch so make sure that you bend the micro switch just slightly uh, in that direction so that you can fit this thing in without damaging your wires okay and um, yeah the pin broke so i end up having to screw screw this in as i was installing this um, yeah, and the whole pistol pin, the whole pistol is held together by this, the whole blaster is held together by this pin. So it goes into this, so you have, I, you have to drill it out. I, because uh, if you do not have that uh, file to file it, I, uh, good luck finding a drill trying to drill it down. And yeah, it is a very, very tight fit. Everything has to be very tight. Like the way you solder the wire to the, motors it has to be very uh, thin so you will have to bend the pins make sure you don't use too much uh, solder if not it will not fit and yeah basically this is the issue I had and because this this um, hole is so bad that I'm not they I'm not sure if they forgot to give me the pin to hold this piece in because this is the motor plate to protect the motors from the trigger uh, I couldn't find a pin that you need to put into this hole so I ended up putting in a screw but putting in the screw as you can see the allowance is so so little that the screw will just block the thing so I had to do some uh, minor modifications to just cut out a bit more just so that the screw actually sits in it okay and so that is uh, some of the main issues that I have with this blaster and then the last part um, of this uh, the issue that I had with this 3D printed part supplied by Frontline Foams uh, 
I'm not sure if it was warping that the print warped itself that this part was so tight that none that the grooves on this they I mean, I'm not sure if you can see this the grooves that is going to follow like the this this grooves here so that it will slide you know it will slide along the this pistol shell uh, it was so tight that it refused to move it added so much friction to the pistol that it cracked my pistol uh, the, the trigger and yeah so what I did was I used heat gun I had to use a heat gun to just blow along the sides just to expand the side a little slightly uh, just to accommodate the the size of all this the barrel the pusher mount the flywheel cage just to fit it in and yeah so it looked kind of uh, weird and uh, in just to get this thing to work I had to kind of destroy <laughs> the aesthetics see uh, I'm not sure if you can see this yeah I mean, it is quite obvious that you see there's this uh, band around here and it's no longer flat so uh, it's an issue because it really exposes the wires and I had to also do the same thing to this just widen it a little bit so that I can fit this uh, the Mac release pin um, yeah the, to fit the motors and also to low and I had to file the crap out of this just so that uh, the trigger this part of the trigger eh, is able to move freely but um, like I said I think I'm not sure why but it's just so much friction that uh, no matter what I did the uh, lithium grease just greased the crap out of the, the blaster it broke the trigger so I end up printing my own and it worked okay so I'm just going to uh, yeah so overall I mean like so this is my experience the the complaints that I have on the different parts of the blaster receiving it and the modifications that I had to make in order to make this thing work and yeah so now I am just going to uh, show I'm just going to pause the video and disassemble the parts that I can disassemble to show you how to piece it all together uh, so that you don't have to experience what I experienced which is to scour through the different texts like some nerf scholar trying to decipher the instructions to put this thing together okay be right back okay and I am back so uh, the parts that I can disassemble to show you how to put this back together first thing first is uh, there really is no uh, strict order to putting this thing together so I'm just going to do what I think is uh, easiest first and the first thing that I think is the easiest is, is install the pusher mount with this uh, flippy arm thingy which is, which is called the flippy arm on their 3D printed files and uh, it's really just straightforward um, just put the, the pusher pin in put in the uh, flippy arms screw it in using the screw that they provided and then the pin just put it into the flippy arm so that you can move you know as I mean like it's pretty straightforward so when you press the trigger it pushes the round into the flywheel cage okay so this is pretty straightforward and the next one okay don't put in the spring yet because trust me if you were to accidentally press it the spring will come shooting out and there's a high chance that you are going to lose that spring so uh, yeah don't do not do it okay and then the next part is the gears that you receive okay not sure if you can see it all right so this is the part we'll just put it in just drop that in that's easy and do not put in the big gear yet I would recommend that you put this thing in first because you have to slide it in and make sure to sand it all down so it's all smooth uh, and whatnot and line this up flush with this and then drop this in drop this to this pin here the next to the smaller one ok 
okay and there you go just try to find it in find the teeth yeah and there you go it's in so when you push the trigger ah. hey, what am i doing ah yes Oh uh, yeah, um, okay, <laughs> sorry about that. So I just figured it out, so you just remember to make sure that it's reset before you put it in because uh, if not you'll be like me, <laughs> figuring out why I couldn't press the trigger. Alright, so same thing, just put it back in, try to find the teeth, make sure that it's flush, this part is flush, as flush as possible to here. And once you do, you should be able to yep it should work and for some strange reason there is no screw or what so ever to hold this thing in so the idea i believe was to use the cage itself to hold it in because it was it is such a tight um tight fit so it's theoretically it should fit but every time when i press the trigger this will fly out so what i did just a slight modification that I do will find some thin plastic that you can put it put this over and then just screw it in this is what I did and it worked for me all right so do you will have to make some minor uh, adjustments to your pit to your blaster in order to get this to work all right uh, okay let me just find a way to screw this in okay so yep this is what i did so now it has a lesser chance of it just uh, imploding on itself while inside the cage the frame Okay, uh, and also do take note that you might need to trim down the screw on this uh, so that it doesn't it does not come through on the other side you know where the uh, magazine is going to fit or it might interfere with the feeding of the magazine and you will have to screw this in as much as possible so you do not and uh, so that the frame can accept the screw okay then there we go okay looks looks like it works fine okay. all right so there we have it it works fine all right okay now okay it works fine it looks fine to me so now what you want to do all right locate this groove here and just put this spring here the the trigger the trigger uh, part would have this little groove here to hold the spring and i would suggest just try to dig it a little bit deeper so that it holds the spring uh, much better all right so here it is and there we go all right i wouldn't recommend pressing it <laughs> pressing the trigger now as we can see that almost imploded on itself again okay and then it will sit in the cage right here Ta -da! pressing it a few times okay it works all right looks good okay and to hold it in place uh, the one thing that i really like about this design is this pin supplied by them you can go into here or the other side here okay depending which side you, you feel is more natural i prefer to put it on this side because i'm a right hander so it does not interfere or 
you know, catch itself onto my clothing when I holster it on the right side of my leg. Okay, so we have the trigger trigger system in place. It works. Nice sound to it. Okay. Okay, so next up, uh, it's really just up to you on how you want to do this. You can fix up the um, the flywheel cage. Uh, I wouldn't, I will not be showing you how to fix up the flywheel cage because the method is exactly the same as one of the other YouTube videos. I think by Derek Sun, uh, the his assembly guide is I think is for a slightly older model of the pigeon where the frame was split in where the frame was split in half instead of uh, one whole piece like this um, but the inst the installation instruction is still the same with the exception I think with this plate so there is this plate here which you will have to make sure that the soldering on your flywheel motors are as flat as possible so that you can fit this in if not it will give you a ton of headache example too much friction and the trigger will not be pushing down on the micro switch okay so what you want to do is when you're resting down this is the how it should look like it should be resting down on the micro switch and then you know just it being held in place like that okay all right but yeah so what i will be doing now is i am going to install instead the mac release uh, trigger guard thingy okay so there will be three of this rolled up pin uh yeah so this three pin two of them have to go this in because this is in two separate pieces it has to be in here one spring that you can put it here i super glued it in which uh kind of regret it because we uh, regretted it because now the spring is uh, kind of out of shape because you know I did not take note that this thing will be pressing down on this when it's being inserted into the cage so it's really up to you if you want to install this later or install this first but just remember that this thing is going to be in the way so for me I prefer to install this first so I don't forget and then once you line it up you should be able to find the hole uh, you might you find the hole here so you might want to uh, take the smallest drill bit that you can just to slightly drill it through or maybe just use a hammer and just knock this in but once you knock it in you will not be able to remove it so that is the downside Okay, so it works well okay and now all right so once you have checked out the other video on how to install this the flywheel cage you can put this uh, motto the barrel into the fly cage the flywheel cage and then just pray that nothing gets disconnected and everything still works fine okay so it should look it should be flush like this and pray and yeah don't be like me use too much <laughs> uh, wiring I used too much and I did not balance it out so <laughs> so I had this <laughs> extra loose end there which I probably will have to deal with it someday okay so anyway that is not important the important right now is putting this in so when you're putting this in do take note of the trigger the mag the magazine release okay so for me i will use my screwdriver to push the spring back so that it can go in oh shit okay whew. all right so managed to get this in mag release works well this thing is in pistol is working fine the trigger is working good all right so to hold this thing in you remember this pin this pin you can choose this the right side profile or the left side profile i choose the left side 
profile because you know being a right hander I can uh, holding it pistol I can just flip it up push back push this up so that this will be holding the blowback shell in place so you can you know open up and check for any jams you know so you can use uh, the other hand to remove the jam so I think the design is quite good in the sense that it's very well thought out okay so just push this in and like I said uh, you might want to take a drill bit and just go through make sure that it's clean because um, on my first few attempts this pin was so rough and it does not fit the hole and this got stuck I had to literally hammer it out and it kind of slight scarring on the shell which uh, paint which pained my heart but this uh, little sacrifice that I had to make because there was no instructions alright okay so it's going in you can see this coming out on the other side and yeah everything looks good okay so take note so your trigger will be pushing down on the micro switch okay so uh, check out on the instruction by Derek Sun on how to wire up your flywheel and how to install the flywheel cage uh, the fly in the fl the flywheels in the flywheel cage I mean it's a pretty straightforward installation even a non-technical person like myself could do it okay and the last thing is this spring is not supplied by them you can use the rubber band to do the blowback action um, the for the, to do rubber band they actually came up with um, a pretty good uh, thought out which is uh, there is a screw port here and there is another here so I prefer to do it here so you can loop the rubber band supplied by them loop it here and then put it out back here hold it here and then you can put this in and then when you pull it back This. okay so when you pull it back all right so you can just hold a rubber band as you pull it back just hook it onto this little notch here all right so it will be your blowback return but uh, for me I decided to use a spring instead so if you have one of these springs lying around great because it really works very well with the whole blowback action thing uh, yeah so maybe you might want to oil everything so yeah it works and this is the blowback lock switch to do note that if you want the blowback to be engaged this has to be down okay how it works is it's, it's the the push the blowback pusher block that you installed that I told, told you about that will come flying out because I didn't have they didn't have this well yeah so this is where this pin actually goes down and locks it in place so when you push the trigger yeah it pushes the pin pushing it back yeah and then the whole purpose of this is just so that you want to check for jams push it back uh, all the way and then you can push this up okay and then you can just check for jams inside all right but uh, mine doesn't work so well because I have a spring so it had created the extra space that I am unable to lock it okay and then the final part that you want to do is uh, install your battery put it in the batteries uh, you can check out the other video on how the other guy do it um, basically it's just it's a very tight fit so this will be you know at the side this will be at the side with the batteries here so you have to really just slot it in it is a very very tight fit so yeah no idea why they sent me the shell that I could barely fit everything and this is the last part here they have this uh, plug which you can choose to install or not that's up to you and then just put it in and then the last pin this can go in here so to lock it in place there you have it full installation done okay so uh, yeah 
so you might want to rewind to the front part where I was talking about how I did some modifications to actually make this work because when I first received it this does not work it tends to just get stuck here get stuck there stuck somewhere and it didn't work okay and obviously the last part is this plate where you have to it is very straightforward just screw it in now you might have to dig out a little bit more just so that the screws can go in and you might have to cut out a little bit of this in order to fit this in because when they sent it to me it was uh, too long it doesn't fit in all right so there you have it pigeon market assembly instructions is actually really very simple uh, yeah they mean the, the sites came printed so you can put it on if you want yeah good luck good luck putting it together and uh, godspeed in your foam flingy and foam flinging endeavors endeavor endeavor ciao